To finish up this chapter, let's review what we've talked about with a little project. We'll just go over a few simple steps that will allow us to practice some of the concepts in this chapter. Most chapters in this video will have a similar project at the end. Let's begin. To start off, let's make a brand new file. You may be in a new file already, but we're going to start off with a brand new file so that we get familiar with the process and all the steps involved in it. There are several ways, as we talked about, to start a new file. You can just type in new, but let's go through a lot of the steps. To get you used to working with the ribbon, go up to the application menu, which is that big red A in the top left corner. Click new, drawing. This opens up the template folder. We want to use the template file called acad.dwt. Click open. And here we go. We want to create an architectural drawing using feet and inches for our units. So we need to click on the application menu again to check our units. Go down to drawing utilities and then units. Okay, we need to set this up. It's already in inches and it should be for you. If not, click on the arrow and select inches. Now we want to go to architectural. So you go to the length type architectural. Precision of 1 16th of an inch is fine for this project. As for the angles, let's make them decimal degrees and a precision with one decimal place. For what we're going to do, this will be satisfactory and click OK. Now it's always a good practice to save your file early on and then very regularly after that. There's always a chance that something will happen and you'll lose your work. AutoCAD crashes, especially once you get into a very complicated file. And then when you start adding references to other CAD files or to other data sets, etc., then it just bogs it down and if your hardware isn't up to snuff, then you could have troubles. And if your hardware is absolutely top of the line, it could still be a problem. So it's just a common thing that happens with AutoCAD. It's not your fault, it just happens. So you have to be prepared for it. So let's save the file. You can save it anywhere that you'd like to, but make sure it's in a place where you know where to go. I suggest making a folder for all of your CAD work here, somewhere on your computer, on an external hard drive, a jump drive, something. You could even save your work in Autodesk 360, which is Autodesk's cloud-based support platform. There you'll be able to save files to the cloud and you can access them from anywhere. You can even access them from your mobile device. If your hard drive crashes, if your computer explodes and bursts into flames, you'll still have your files available to you on the cloud. AutoCAD 2013 and AutoCAD LT 2013 have a lot of integration built into it with the cloud. So let's save the file. Click on the application menu, and you can click save because we started with a template file so it's not saved already. Browse to a place where you want to save it and save it. You have some options here so you can set up your automatic online saving properties. Just click on it, it will open up your information, give you some information and data on how much cloud space you've used. I've only used 5.7 megabytes of the three gigabytes that are provided free to every customer. But you can enable the cloud storage, you can even sync your settings in AutoCAD, and you can set it to automatically save every file you work on. Now, if you're working with a lot of files that are very large and have a lot of memory, you could fill up that three gigabytes, so be careful. For now, you may want to keep it on, but it's up to you. And to get to Autodesk 360, you can click on the button here. When you're done, click OK, and that will save your settings. If you want to save it to Autodesk 360, you can just click right here. That will open up a folder that you have automatically saved up in your hard drive that automatically syncs with the cloud. Save your files here if you'd like. We're going to name this file Chapter Project. This is Chapter 4, so we'll call it Chapter 4 Project. You can call it whatever you'd like, then click Save. Now since this file has been synced to the cloud, every time you save it, your cloud file will be updated. 
you can go to the online tab right here on the ribbon to sync your files, to look at your files that you have, to upload them, to download them, etc. All right, that was a little extra I threw in there, but let's get back to where we're at on our chapter project. So now that we've set up our file, set the units, and we've saved it, keep in mind that it's a good practice to save your file regularly. So save early and save often. There's always a chance that something will happen and you'll lose your work, and that's bad. So let's draw something. I know we haven't talked a lot about drawing something, but that's coming. Now we've built a foundation on how to interact with AutoCAD, and we understand the interface now, and we know where things are, and so if we need to find something, we can. So let's take a look here. Let's draw a rectangle. Now to do that, you can just come up to the Home tab on the ribbon and the Draw panel and click Rectangle. Now, we just want to draw something here so that we have an object to work with. So you can pick anywhere on your screen. Pick your first point with the left click of the mouse, move it up to the top right, just anywhere. It can be small, it can be large, it won't matter. And click again. And there you go. You drew a rectangle. Good job. Now, we're going to do something else. Let's work with the grid. By default, in that ACAD.DWT file, the grid is on, or at least should be. If it's not, that's fine, but we want to turn it on. So if it isn't, you can come down here to your status bar and toggle it off or on by clicking it. Or you can press the F7 key. Now we also want to turn on our snap functionality. But let's set some of this stuff up first. Come down to your status bar, right click, and go to settings. This will get you to your settings here. There are a lot of different things you can mess with. Bowler tracking, object snap, 3D object snap, but not in AutoCAD LT, or your snap and grid. This is what we want to do. So let's turn it on. Right now it's set to space everything at half of an inch. Because we're using architectural units of inches, one unit is one inch long. So keep that in mind when we're drawing. Now let's tell it to make a grid line every 10 units. So let's change this to 10, because that's what we're going to snap to. And we want it to be equal X and Y spacing. So keep that locked in. And now come down here for the grid, type in 10 units. OK. Now, you can see here our grid is quite large. But that's OK. Make sure your snap mode is turned on. And let's do some work. So pick the rectangle. You can use a crossing window, you can use an inclusion window, you can use the fence, or you can just select it. Because it's a little small, we want to get rid of it. Once you've selected it, you can use the erase command, which is right here on the ribbon, in the modify panel. Or, once you've selected something, you can press the delete key. And that's the same as erasing. So that's a real quick tip if you want to get rid of something. Select it, and then hit the delete key. It's very quick, very efficient. Now let's double click on the scroll wheel. This will do a zoom extents. See, we don't have anything here, so that's okay. So now with your snap mode on, let's start to draw something. Let's use your scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out, pan around a little bit. And one thing you might find that happens in AutoCAD is once you zoom out so far, it won't let you zoom anymore. This is an old setting that's in AutoCAD that's been around for a long time. And it just sort of says, I can't go any farther. So what you need to do is execute what's called a regen all. And that is just typing in REA. That will refresh the screen, refresh the drawing area, tell AutoCAD, hey, reset. It doesn't delete anything. It doesn't change anything. It just sort of clears out the memory and clears out a little bit of stuff on your screen, smooths out arcs and circles, and allows you to zoom out again. See, even your pan will get stuck, just like this. This is going to happen to you all the time. So just remember REA. And there you go. It gets real annoying from time to time. But once you know what to do, it's a quick fix to get through it. Now let's start drawing a line. Let's type line on the command line. Press Enter. Let's draw a triangle. Now remember that we're snapping to specific places on the grid. That can help us line up our lines very easily. So pick a point, snap, 
snap again, and then just snap to the end. There's a triangle. See how easily the snap function allowed us to work? If we draw the line again, I can come to this point and draw in some more triangles. I can keep drawing until I finish off the command. And there you go. It's very easy to draw things with snap on. It's very quick and it's very simple. So if you're an architect and you're laying out a room, you can set up your grid work so that it's to a certain unit. And that unit could be, you know, the width of your wall. It could be, you know, one foot, one meter. And you can very quickly draw some shapes. Okay, I snapped to the wrong spot here, so let's undo that. Go up to your quick access toolbar and click the undo arrow. Well, it, it undid my whole inside box. Yes, because we did all of that in one command, in one function. So we need to draw that back. Draw a line, start the line command again. And let's draw. We'll keep the width of this box on the inside of the other box to just one grid space wide. When you're done, press Enter. Okay, so we've drawn some things that we've snapped to. Now let's zoom out and let's draw some lines, making another box to exact coordinates. So start the line command again. And let's tell AutoCAD to go to specific coordinates. Let's go to coordinate 10, 60. Press Enter. Now remember, these units are in inches. So coordinate of 10, which brings us right to this snap point anyway, is at 10 inches along the x axis. And then a coordinate of 60 will bring us up 60 inches on the y axis. So that's great. So if we want to draw a line now that is 50 units long, well, we can snap to five different places here on the grid because we have set up our grid to be 10 units long, or we can just do the math on the coordinates. Since we're at x coordinate of 10, we need to go to x coordinate of 60. That will put us at 50 units wide. So to tell AutoCAD that, hey, we want to draw to coordinates again, you need to first start with the pound key and then type in our first unit, which is going to be 50, and then comma, and we'll draw it at 60. This will put us at a horizontal line to the right, 50 units long. Press Enter. And there's our line. Drawing to coordinates can be difficult and tedious because you have to know exactly where you need to put it. And typically that won't be the case. There are exceptions, of course. Surveyors all the time will draw to coordinates because they know where the coordinates are for the points and, you know, if they're getting property corners or something like that. So that will happen. We can also draw a line in a direction at a specific length. So if we draw a line, we'll snap to right here. And let's say we want it to be 50 units long and press the tab key. And as you can see, this line is now 50 units long in any angle direction that we want to go to. And click the button, and there you go. <laughs> very simple, very easy to do. So there are a lot of ways to work within AutoCAD. Let me show you another little trick here. Let's draw a line again. Pick a point. Type in the at symbol. This will tell AutoCAD to go to a specific length and then angle. So type in 3, tab, then hit the less than sign, and then 90. Press Enter. That drew a line three units long at 90 degrees. We can do that in a different way as well. We can just type in 20 and then hit tab and then type in an angle of 45. So if you have dynamic input on, and we'll get more in depth about it later, 
you can do things a little bit differently. But if you turn your dynamic input off, you have to type in the at symbols and the pound symbols and the less than to get the different angles and things. Double click your mouse scroll wheel to do a zoom extents. You may even want to zoom out a little bit so you can see everything very clearly on your screen and press control S at the same time. There, you just saved your file. Now remember, get into a habit of doing control S, you know, draw a little bit, control S, draw a little bit more, control S, etc. This is a quick and easy way to make sure that you don't lose your work. And congratulations, you just made your very first AutoCAD drawing.